What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about volume for gains. Now, those of you who have followed me for a long time know that I've talked about the importance of volume for maximizing hypertrophy. And in the last five to 10 years, we have had a ton of literature come out on volume. A few things before we get into this. Volume in its purest form is defined as weight times reps times sets. For example, if you did three sets of 10 reps with 100 pounds, that'd be 3000 pounds of volume. Okay. Very pure and simple. Now, criticisms of this have been, well, you could just take the bar and do a thousand reps and you've got 4,500 pounds of volume. Absolutely valid criticism. Absolutely. That probably would not stimulate muscle growth. There is quite a bit of data to suggest that the volume needs to be relatively close to failure. Now by what relatively close to failure, what do I mean by that somewhere around within five reps of failure, subjectively defined, basically the number of hard sets, because we do know that it doesn't really matter if you do like low reps or high reps for muscle growth, at least in the shorter term, it's mostly about the number of hard sets you do. When we're talking about that, how many sets per week should we be targeting of hard sets? Recent data has suggested that there really isn't an upper limit to volume that they found so far, but the data is really unclear. It's kind of muddy. For example, there was a recent study that came out that looked at the effects of 12, 18 or 24 sets a week of lower body training on strength and hypertrophy. Now, if volume is important or the most important thing for hypertrophy and strength, we would expect to see kind of a linear association between strength and hypertrophy and the set number. And actually what they saw was the 18 set group got a little bit better gains than the other groups, but there really wasn't much difference between the three groups. So how do we explain this? I was talking to James Krieger the other day and by the way, you guys should all follow him. He's got excellent material. And he talked about how, if you look at the subjects in the study, you have to look at what their pre study volume was. Some of those subjects came into the study doing a lot of volume. They were adapted to quite a bit of volume. Other people came in and weren't doing much volume at all. So for some people that 18 or 24 sets might've been a huge increase in volume, but for other people, it might've actually been a drop in volume. What they found was the people that had an increase in volume during this program got better results than the people who did not increase their volume, which suggests that volume may not be absolute. It may be more of an effect of change. So we know, for example, that your body can adapt to a certain calorie intake by either raising or lowering your energy expenditure. What if your body could adapt to a certain amount of volume? Cool stuff. What does this practically mean? Well, this is all kind of theoretical. I had James on our podcast a few weeks ago. We talked about the concept of volume cycling. So if you're trying to increase volume on everything, it's going to be really difficult to do that. And you can only increase volume so much before it just becomes completely impractical because you have to do, you know, 40 sets per week on every muscle group. What would be our suggestions? Well, James talked about volume cycling. So the concept with volume cycling is you take a training block and you focus on a specific body part and you ramp up the volume for that particular body part and everything else kind of stays at maintenance or you drop it back. And if you drop it back, perhaps you can resensitize yourself to volume. Now I'm sure everyone out there is saying that's great. I'd love to grow my legs, my arms, my delts and have a focus period for that, but I don't want everything else to shrink. Well, what you need to maintain muscle mass in terms of volume is way less than what you need to build it. In fact, there was a study showing that one ninth of the volume that was used to build muscle was sufficient to maintain it. And those that did one third, the volume actually continued to still make a little bit of gains. So at minimum, you could cut your volume back to a third of what you're currently doing on a particular body part or even a ninth and probably maintain most, if not all of your muscle while you focus on something else. 
and then you could switch. So for example, I just did this. I have trained my legs high volume since forever because my legs were always a weak point and I just hammered them and it did work. I was able to catch my legs up mostly to the rest of my body, but I was adapted to like 30, 40 sets of legs per week. And I was petrified of dropping this back. Now, more recently, I've been more in the area of like 20 to 30 sets a week. I dropped my volume back for six weeks to four sets of legs a week. And I gotta tell you, I know it's anecdotal. I did not see a visual change in my leg size or strength. And during that time, I focused on my delts. I hammered my delts. I was doing my delts three, four times a week, probably upwards of 35 to 40 sets per week. And I did see a little bit of change. And honestly, my delts have been plateaued for a long period of time. So now what am I doing? Well, I'm dropping back my delt volume and now I'm raising up my leg volume. Hopefully that period of time where I was doing way less sets on my legs, now maybe I've resensitized myself to that volume. And as I ramp that volume back up, now I can grow my legs while I put everything else kind of on maintenance mode. So I'm not trying to say that this is how everyone should train because we just don't know. A lot of this stuff is just completely hypothetical and it's theoretical, but it seems to make sense. Very dangerous words in science. A lot of stuff has seemed like it would make sense that didn't work out when they studied it. But there's quite a bit of anecdotal evidence from people who I respect that suggests that this might be a viable way to train. At minimum, you're not gonna lose muscle by backing your volume off. And it allows you to have more time to focus on a particular body part or perhaps strength movement that you want to improve on. If you guys want to check out some of the links of the studies I discussed, you can click the links in the description. Also, you can check out our educational courses, educational books, our workout builder. So if you need help with your programming and not sure how to implement some of this stuff, you can try the workout builder and our nutritional coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you next week.